Investigate the graph of y equals f of the quantity x minus h, where f is some function and h is some constant, by hand, by table, with technology, and then generalize. You will need graph paper or a page of graph grids. You can download those at this website right here. This is part of the Family of Functions series. We will start our investigation with the squaring function y equals x squared. I'd like you to go ahead and graph y equals x squared using the parabola dance. Press pause until you're finished. So we start off with 0, comma 0, the origin, because 0 squared is equal to 0. Write 1 up 1 because 1 squared is 1. Write 2 up 4. Write 3 up 9. And then on the other side, left 1 up 1. Left 2 up 4. Left 3 up 9. Or we could have also used symmetry about the y-axis to get those last three points. Go ahead and connect the points and you have y equals x squared, that beautiful parabola. So keeping an eye on this parent function, we're going to graph y equals the quantity of x minus 4 squared. We're going to make a table with seven rows with these values right here. You might ask why these values for x, and it will make more sense soon, so hold on. Complete the table, press pause until you're finished. So here are the values that we got in the table, and this is how we got them. So if you need to press pause to check those out, go ahead and do so. But go ahead and plot the points, and then press pause until you're finished. Here are the points. Go ahead and connect the points. Press pause until you're finished. And connecting the points, you can see we get the graph y equals the quantity of x minus 4 squared. So how are the graphs similar? Well, they are the same shape. You can see that. But how are they different? Press pause and think about that until you're finished. You can see that the vertex is right 4 from blue to green. This point's right 4 from blue to green, right 4 and right 4. Also, let's look at the tables. Let's compare and contrast using tables. So we'll make a table for y equals x squared, the traditional parabola. And these are our values here. So go ahead and compare and compa to contrast what you see in these tables. Press pause until you're finished. One thing you'll notice is that the y-coordinates are identical in these tables. Look at the corresponding x-coordinates. Press pause until you're finished, until you see a pattern emerging there. And from 3 going up to 7, you add 4. But hey, wait a minute, that says minus 4. Let's try this again. From 2 to 6 is plus 4, and hey, again, minus 4. So that seems to be the pattern, huh? When there's a minus 4 inside the parentheses, it seems like you add 4 because of the minus 4. So again, plus 4, plus 4. So all the x-coordinates are increased by 4 to shift it to the right. And it's because of that minus 4 inside the squaring function. And yeah, hey, it's reversed. Remember that. So all the coordinates are increased by 4 while the y-coordinates stay the same. So what we say is that the graph of y, the y equals the quantity of x minus 4 squared has a horizontal shift right 4 from its parent function y equals x squared. This is how we word this. We're going to repeat the same exercise, but with a different equation. 
So again, keeping an eye on y equals x squared in blue, the parent function here, let's graph y equals the quantity of x plus 3 squared. This time we're only going to use a table with five rows. I think that will be enough for us. And we're going to use these values for x. It'll make more sense soon why we chose those. So go ahead and complete the table. Press pause until you're finished. And these are the values that we came up with, and this is how we got them. Press pause if you need to. Go ahead and plot those points and press pause until you're finished. Those are the five points plotted. We'll go ahead and connect the points. Press pause when you're completed. And we're getting the graph of y equals the quantity of x plus 3 squared in green there. How are the graphs similar as we said before? Well, they are the same shape. And how are they different? Again, press pause until you've completed that thought. Notice from blue to green, left three units, left three units from every single point. Now let's compare and contrast using tables. We looked at the graph. Let's now look at tables. And so we'll look at a y equals x squared table using these five values. And these are the y values that we get. So go ahead and compare and contrast. Press pause until you come up with some ideas. Well, notice that the y coordinates are identical. Now look at the corresponding x coordinates. Press pause once you've come up with a pattern there. And from 2 to negative 1, you subtract 3 and compare that to the equation. That's a plus 3. And A, hmm, let's try the next one. From 1 to negative 2, you subtract 3. Again, compare that there. So it's very similar to before. When we subtracted, we had to add. When we add, we have to subtract. So all x coordinates are decreased by 3. You can see that right there in the graph. And in the equation, it's a plus 3. Yep, it's reversed. We've got to remember that. With when it's inside the function, it reverses from what you think it would be. So all the x coordinates are decreased by 3, while the y coordinates stay the same. What we say is that the graph of the y equals the quantity of x plus 3 squared has a horizontal shift left 3 from its parent function y equals x squared. That's the terminology we'll be using in the phrasing. So let's generalize what we have learned so far. The graph of y equals x squared, the parent function, and the graph of y equals the quantity of x minus some number h, the quantity squared, are the same curve, the same set of points. They're identical. If h is positive, the graph shifts horizontally to the right h units from the parent function. If h is negative, however, and it's x plus some number, the quantity squared, the graph shifts horizontally to the left, the absolute value of that negative number units from y equals x squared. Does this horizontal shift hold true for other functions besides the squaring function? Well, we're going to investigate this using TI technology. So here we have the graph of y equals x cubed. It's in a dashed blue. And we have also y equals the quantity of x minus some number of the quantity cubed, and that's in green. We have a slider that controls the values for h. We can increase or decrease them. And we also have the table that goes along with this. And here are the, va the y values for uh, the parent function and the y values for the green transformed function. So let's go ahead and look and see what's going on there. If I increase h by to 1, then we're graphing y equals the quantity of x minus 1 cubed. 
and you can see that the graph has definitely been shifted to the right. Looks like about one unit. X minus two, the quantity cubed, you can kind of see the shift there. X minus three, the quantity cubed, it's exactly the same shape, just been shifted horizontally to the right. And so you can see here, zero, zero is at the blue one, but it's three places later when it's three comma zero on the green one because of that shift three. Let's also go ahead and look at when H is negative. So this is Y equals the quantity of X plus one cubed. And you can see it's shifted to the left horizontally, one unit, the absolute value of that number there. H is negative two. The Y equals the quantity of X plus two cubed. And here again, you'll see here, zero, zero here, but it's negative two comma zero for the green one. So it's two later, okay, because of that plus two there but it's going backwards, just the reverse. And looking at x plus three, the quantity cubed, and x plus four, the quantity cubed. Here we have in blue, that, 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 that. Here we have in dash blue, y equals the square root of x as the parent function, and y equals the square root of the quantity x minus zero. All of that is inside the function there. Uh, we also have the table. So let's go ahead and increase the slider so that h is one. So notice that to compare y equals the square root of x minus one, the quantity x minus one, to the parent function. Looks like it's shifted to the right one unit y equals the square root of the quantity x minus 2 shifts 2 to the right each point. y equals the quantity of x minus 3. And again, you can see that when here I had 0, 0 on the blue function, I don't get to 0 until I'm at 3, 0 on the green function because of that minus 3, shifting it to the right. Let's go ahead and make h a negative number. So now we're looking at y equals the square root of the quantity x plus one, shifted to the left one. y equals the square root of the quantity x plus two, shifted to the left two, and so on. Here the parent function is a piecewise function, y equals f1 of x in blue, and y equals f1 of the quantity x minus zero, is going to be in green, and this is the slider that will control the values for h. So I'm going to increase h to be equal to 1, and you can see that the green graph, y equals f1 of the quantity x minus 1, how it compares to the blue graph, shifted to the right one unit. y equals f1 of the quantity x minus 2, that same blue graph is now shifted two units to the right. f1 of the quantity x minus 3, minus 4, and so on. Using negative values for h, y equals f1 of the quantity of x plus 1. You can see the entire graph is shifted to the left 1 unit, shifted to the left 2 units, shifted to the left 3 units, and so on. Next, there are three different parent functions graphed alongside those parent functions with a value h that is either added or to or subtracted from x inside the function. Notice the patterns between the graph and the value for h, the constant added inside the function. Press pause anytime as needed when you're doing this. So here we have the graph of y equals absolute value of x. The parent function is in dashed blue. In green is y equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus 1, and notice it's shifted to the right, one unit. Over here, y equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus 4, and the green graph is definitely right four units from the blue absolute value function. y equals absolute the quantity x minus 5, shifted to the right five units. And then, when it's y equals absolute value of the quantity x plus 2, from blue to green, it's shifted to the left 2 units. And for this one, shifted to the left 4 units. 
Press pause any time as needed. Here we're looking at the reciprocal function. The parent function is in dashed blue. Here it's y equals 1 over the quantity of x minus 2. And so the minus 2 had it shifted to the right two units. You can see the vertical asymptote shifted and the whole graph shifted as well. y equals 1 over the quantity x minus 3. Everything shifted to the right three units, including the as vertical asymptote y equals a quant 1 over the quantity x minus 4 to the right. But when is y equals 1 over the quantity of x plus 1, the entire graph shifted left 1, including the vertical asymptote. Similarly, for y equals 1 over the quantity of x plus 3. Press pause any time as needed. And here we have a generic function, y equals f one of x here, and when it's y equals f1 of the quantity x minus 1, it's shifted to the right one unit. Here it's shifted to the right two units, right three units, left one unit, and left two units. Let's summarize graphing y equals f of the quantity x minus h, where h is some constant. When h is greater than 0, that is, h is a positive number, the graph shifts right horizontally, h units, positive, right. When h is less than 0, that is, h is a negative number, the graph shifts left horizontally, the absolute value of that negative number, h, units, negative to the left. Now you try one. Graph y equals the square root of the quantity, x plus 3, for practice. Press pause to do this and then resume when you're finished to check your answer. And here is the graph of y equals the square root of the quantity x plus 3. It's the square root function shifted entirely to the left, 3 units, because of this plus 3 inside the function, square root function.